Hello. Uh, efficient big data exploration with SQL and Apache Drill. I was already introduced with my name and the company. I am senior consultant at Atos Consulting. Uh, on the beginning, let's start with some question. Uh, who uh, had the chance to try already Drill? Maybe you can raise your hand. Great, one person. Excellent. <laughs> and who, who knows something about Drill? Please also raise your hand. Okay, great, we have few hands. Excellent. So we know what we are talking about. Let's introduce myself first. Uh, already the lady told my name and, and surname. Um, here you can see some information. I would like to make a short comment about photo. Often people are asking me, what, what a crazy photo is that? What are you doing here? So I'm uh, on the uh, oil research survey. Those green toys are um, um, seismometers, and the survey is taking place in Egypt on a desert. During presentation, we will see some more pictures from that event. But what are we going to talk about? Uh, here we have our agenda, starting with introduction, following by short demo, then we will learn a little bit of more of technical details, and we will have a deep dive into drill at the end, summary and questions and answers. So let's start with introduction. When I started my adventure with IT, the computers were like that. By the way, who had a chance to use 8-bit computer like Atari or Commodore? Ah, good group. <laughs> we have a lot of IT dinosaurs here. <laughs> You're welcome. <laughs> That's nice. <coughs> I'm, uh, I am among them. <laughs> so, what were the parameters? Uh, 64 kilobytes of memory and such storage. <laughs> yes. Um, not, you couldn't do much with that. When I started my IT, a professional career, 20 years ago, the data looked more or less like that. What can we see? Uh, two nicely organized tables. <laughs> data were organized in some nice tables, mm, uh, easy to pick, easy to understand, uh, very uh, or not difficult to manage. But the times changed, and now the data looks like this. <laughs> we have a big mat of data. And picking the correct information is not as easy as before. But we also have better computers. Uh, 32 gigabytes is quite a standard. Um, or even we have uh, computation units like, uh, oh, I'm going too fast. Whoa, what happened? <coughs> Sorry, presenter, I, I'm not very much used to presenter, as a presentation effect. <laughs> Let's go back here. Uh, three terabytes of, of RAM, uh, yes, uh, bullion, that's the, the one. And of course, with a lot of memory, we can do a lot. And why are we talking at all about memory? Because we would like our data to fit into memory in order to process them quickly. And that's what drill does, actually. Now we are moving to Drill, what is Apache Drill? It's a low latency distributed schema free SQL query engine for large scale data sets, which can be structured, semi structured, nested, nested, whatever. And Drill is designed to scale even to thousands of nodes and query petabytes of data at the speeds which are quite fast required by BIN analytics environments. So, let's start with some demo, right? I don't want to bore you with slides. I will start uh, cons the web console of Apache Drill, and let's type some query. What does it mean, this dfs.demo? Uh, and so, I will explain a little bit later. The thing is that I am querying countries.csv, csv file having or containing some data about countries. 
and uh, that's the demo effect. <laughs> it happens. Yes, I have to quickly update configuration, which we will also talk about in the moment. Yes, that can happen only on demos, yes? On slides, it doesn't happen. Slides are demo proof. <laughs> okay, and the query which I typed, I have it also here. Okay, here we are. So we have some info about countries here. Um, they are 10 entries, we have a pagination, we can sort it by whatever information we would like, name, density, whatever. And here we see the data. Uh, since we are in Spain, then we would like to see something about Spain. Of course, we can do that, we can filter. And here we are. I don't know how correct are those data, by the way. <laughs> I found it on the internet, so don't please don't blame me if the numbers are not so correct. Uh, good, so that's how the web console looks like, yes? We can do some of the things out of the box, and uh, that's a good start, actually, yes? We can look into some file and, and, and briefly start to, to, to analyze that. That was just a very short demo to show you some highlight, and later we will see much, much more details. Uh, but uh, before the big demo, we probably would like to know a little bit of technical details of Drill. So here we are with some basic info, yeah, like website, current version, supported uh, query language, which is SQL 2011. It's quite interesting because even not so many uh, DB servers support that standard. And interfaces, they are also quite many, as you can see. There is a shell, which we will use soon. There is web console, which you saw just before a moment. JDBC, ODBC, and all sort of APIs. Supported data sources and formats. Of course, there is no surprise that we can query various DBMSs, but the whole power of Drill is that it allows us to query no SQL data. So we have no SQL data stores here, like MongoDB or HBase. We have a variety of uh, file formats, from as simple as CSV to as complex as JSON, uh, Hive, Metastore as well. Quite a good number of formats, I can say. Uh, let's take a look at uh, features. Uh, what, what, is, what this drill can do for us. So first, it has a dynamic schema discovery. What does it mean? It means that if we bring a file like CSV or JSON, we can just query it on the fly and the schema is discovered by the engine. It second doesn't require uh, centralized metadata. So mm, we don't need uh, metadata like in, in DBMSs or, or in case of Hive, we also have some more. MongoDB, of course it's used if it exists, but in case if not, that's fine. Drill will discover everything. Flexible data model, uh, I touched it before a moment, saying about uh, JSON, so even such complex uh, structures can be nicely processed, and we will see it, actually. Um, In-memory data processing, whenever possible, whenever data can fit into memory. Extensible architecture, that's uh, already fifth, right? Um, what does it mean? We can extend Drill on pretty much every level, starting from storage, uh, storage plugins, and ending with the SQL. We can implement our own SQL functions, we can do it in Java, and just use it in the, our queries. Then, distributed and embedded mode. Uh, here, we are using Drill in embedded mode, but uh, it's designed to work in distribute mode, and uh, that's how the big productive solutions would look like. Yes, uh, here we have a diagram showing us how distributed setup would look like. So we have a group of drill bits. Drill bit is a name of drill engine. They are all managed by Zookeeper, and client is contacting 
drill bits, but not directly, but through Zookeeper. And uh, what is also uh, worth to mention that if, let's say, this is drill bit which now I'm using for my queries, if the workload is quite high, it can split the workload to other drill bits for them to process data in parallel and then the initial one collects all the results and gives back to client. Now let's take a look at our initial query which we typed. Now what does it mean, those, those elements? Yeah, so first one is storage plugin. We say in this case we want to query file system. Then uh, workspace, in this case demo, and then whatever entity we have can be table, view, file, document. In this case, it's a CSV file. Um, you can also notice those backticks. Uh, we need them here because we have the dot. So generally, the text in backticks, they are just a strings. Yes, so the dot is not used as a separator. Now, configuration. The drill is configured through storage plugins. And before a moment when I was adjusting the setup, I needed to jump to the configuration containing storage plugins. You can see here various storages. Maybe I will make it bigger. Among them is file system. And if we, if we click here, we see a JSON, what I did before. And maybe we would like to take a look a little bit into this JSON. So for example, it defines a workspace, and one of them is demo workspace. There is another one which will also use a temp one. Then we have also definitions of formats. Uh, this is my definition which I'm using for querying CSV files. We have here also parquet and JSON, which we will query in a moment, and some other formats like Avro or sequence file. So pretty good number of, of file formats. A query execution. Uh, this sequence diagram shows how the query execution is processed or works. You can take a quick look. I will not spend much time on that now, but we can come back to the details if you wish during uh, questions. It's a time for me to take a little bit of water. And now is the time to see how really drill works. For our questions, we will use Drill Console. I hope visibility is good. Colleagues in the, la in the last rows, can you confirm you see it well? Good. <laughs> Great. So here is the Shell Console, and we will try to run some queries here. Let's say we want to know a little bit about our countries. We are interested in median age. How many countries? have each of the median age. And uh, if we have them, then we want to order them in descending order. So we do some aggregation plus sorting. Pretty much standard in SQL. Here we are. Here is our list of, of median ages and counts. So, Yes, we can query our, SQ, uh, our CSV file with, with standard SQL. If we know that, then maybe we would like to see a little bit uh, about most dense countries, 15 most dense countries. And here is the result. And when we look into the numbers, we can notice, especially here, that something is wrong. It's not what you would expect. What happened? Um, in case of CSV files, we can see first disadvantage. Drill process everything as text. It's, it's not the case with other formats, but with CSV, yes. Everything is text. So we have to tell Drill that is not a text. 
So here we are saying, okay, our density is int. And we are doing the same stuff with sorting. Good, now works. Monaco on the first place. So if we did this, then probably join would be interesting, next case. Can we join the tables, the files? Yes. I will make it a little bit smaller now. I hope it's still well visible. So here is some query where we join the stuff. We have still our countries, but we say, okay, let's join them with some sample data which are provided as part of drill with nations. We join them on the country name. And then we join with another sample table, parquet uh, file. Uh, we say, okay, by region. We want to know at the end where are those countries related in which continents. Let's run this query. Uh, actually, the data are quite many, so maybe console will be a better way, this web console. We can see more columns. Okay, here is our name as the name of the country. So Spain, unfortunately, doesn't exist in the uh, data set, uh, not yet. Maybe we have to fix it. Uh, but France and Germany are here, yes, Europe. So joints are also working, and this is a feature which I like very much. So, so we can, we can uh, use uh, data from different sources, different formats, join them together and have a unified result. If we did that, then maybe we would like to cast now all of our types. We want to have perfect query, all the types casted as they should be. And when I run this query, then we have some surprise. System error, number format exception. Uh, yes, one of Java exceptions, yes, it really is written in Java. But what happened? What value is the problematic one? Which column gave me a problem? We don't know. <laughs> Nothing more. So to find the reason of error, it requires some research. And I needed to do such research, and finally I discovered that some columns like median age or fertility, they are, uh, they have empty strings. And empty strings, um, yes, cannot be easily casted. And I was trying to solve it in several ways. And the way which finally worked for me is with case expression. We check if the value is empty. If yes, then we have null. And null is okay. Null, null can be passed, can be casted to anything. Otherwise, we have a value. And this query uh, works. Yes, we have results. We can also find out that here now we have nulls. So if we have already our nicely tuned SQL query, maybe we would like to make a view out of it. So let's do that. We will define it in, in temp, in our TMP uh, workspace. OK, a view countries one is successfully created. And in this way, drill starts to, uh, to save some metadata. So view is already definition. There are metadata about the types and everything. Normally, drill discovers things on the fly, but uh, in this case, it, everything is already predefined. So let's start. Let's try to to make a query from this newly defined view. We order it again by density, as before, and Monaco is on the first place, as expected. Good. Now is another interesting topic, multi-directory structure. I hope I have somewhere, yes, here. Yeah. The info, information about the structure. Can you see the, this screen? It's not as nicely white as the previous, but can you see well the writings? Okay, good. 
I will make it feel a little bit bigger. Uh, let's take a look into some data. Uh -huh, I don't have this command here. That's not good. Uh, I will need to show it in different way. Let's search for present. Okay, presentations, data. There is a lot of rubbish, but among the rubbish is they are my sales data. And we have sales data divided by years and then months. And at the end, we have CSV files containing our very important sales data from this particular month. So we have a bunch of CSV files scattered among directories. And what we want to do is to have one query which will show us all the sales, sales data. Those CSV files are very simple. They have just one column called sales. So can I do something about that? Can I query it? Let's try to do that. Sales. I forgot. This time the error message is informative. <laughs> yes, this is uh, how our sales data look like. Here is the value. Here is a dear zero. It's a generated column, partitioning column. And here we see the first level of directories and then next level of directories. And this is another feature which I personally like very much. It was very useful for me. Y you may have a periodically coming data, monthly, daily, yearly, whatever. You can keep them as they are coming in different directories. And on top of that, have one query which will give you all the data. And of course, those uh, partitioning columns, they can be used for whatever reason. You can make filtering, sorting, whatever you wish. Good, so we moved through that. So maybe now would be good to see a little bit about querying JSON. JSON is a little bit more complicated than CSV. Let's try. Here is our query, and you may notice that I'm trying to query a file which is zipped. Zipped JSON file. I want to save my space on disk. Good. And here is the result. I was able to query that. Maybe we can limit the result to, uh, to Spain. Uh, what, uh, what can we see here? We can see the simple values, like in case of name. We may have tables, like in this case. We may also have some structures, like maps. In this particular case, all of those substructures are presented just like that. But we may want to do something with, with them, to have them a little bit transformed. First, I will start with uh, some query which will uh, use one of the window functions, and those functions are supported as well. We will see 15 countries with the biggest areas. Yes, so we are doing this function over this stuff, area descending. And here we can notice that the values are processed properly. Yes, this is the <laughs> maybe not much human readable, but that how, that's how deal present float numbers after some values. So probably would like to cast it as int. But the types like string, uh, int in this case, or float, or double, they are all properly recognized. So only CSV is not like that. So once we know that um, the types are working correctly, maybe we would like to, to do something with the tables and with the tables uh, or arrays inside the values. So here we have a currencies. It's an array of currencies. We would like to have it like a nice table, not a, a 
uh, embedded uh, array. And for that purpose, we will use a function which is extension to a standard uh, CQL called flatten. And in addition, we have something called another function called repeated count, which um, gives us number of elements in the array. And we want to see only countries which have more than one currency. Here you are. One of the countries uh, is Switzerland, where I live. I must say I'm not aware of those two currencies. I only know about Swiss franc. In United States, I don't know uh, anything also about those other currencies. Maybe there are some historical data, difficult to say. However, what is important is that here Switzerland occurs three times and each currency occurs once. So we normalized the whole structure. Another interesting case is related to, to those maps. Uh, here we have something like translations per locale. We would like to, or from our perspective, is a key va value pair or group of key value pairs, and you want also to nicely transform them into the table. And this query is a little bit more complicated, but it's doable. Uh, we have here a kvgen uh, function which uh, translates or transforms translations into group of key value pairs and gives the array. Then we do flatten with the array to get a list of rows. And we are interested in Spain, of course. And then we, from the result, we select key, and we say, okay, this is a locale, and value. And value as name, here I have to use backticks as well, because a value is a reserved word. And here you are, our values in nice table. So what, what I like here is that even if we have as complex data as JSON, we can still use CQL to, to query it and get some, some subset of data in the tabular form. And that's pretty much all about the demo. So now we can summarize what did we see, what did we learn during that time. Uh, of course, the features uh, and uh, yes, positive things about drill were mentioned before, but there are also some disadvantages, which I don't want to hide from you. I want to be fair. So we saw poor error handling, right? Number format exception, and that's it. Uh, Plugins management affecting performance. It happens that if you switch on the plugin, and even if you don't use it, and especially if the plugin is misconfigured, it affects performance of all the queries, even if, if this particular storage is not used. So it's, I don't like that. Then limited support of CSV. Um, I would say, mm, w what does it mean that it's limited? When we compare to Spark 2. Uh, Spark 2 can nicely discover all the schema, uh, properly discovers the types. Um, in Drill is not the case, not yet. And lacks in documentation. You may have an impression that documentation is excellent, is very big, but if you look for specific details, then unfortunately they are missing parts. And then use case. For what we can use Drill at all? For data exploration, first of all, yes, definitely. I use it and I really like it. For BI and data analytics, you can find information on the web page that the tool is suitable, but I think it's not yet mature enough to, to be used in that use case. Also, you can. And data transformation, it's, it's quite okay. It's not perfect in all the cases, but, but can be used also. That's pretty much all about the 
details, and now it's time for questions. Here you are. Hi. Um, why should we use drill versus Impala, for example? Uh, versus uh, I didn't Impala. Versus Impala. Versus Impala. So the question is, why should we use uh, drill instead of Impala? Uh, I must admit that I don't know much about Impala, but I, I came over that question on the internet and the, the answer was, uh, so I'm quoting now the answer which I read, <laughs> uh, that drill is what Impala was supposed to be. So, <laughs> of course, that was the answer from people related to drill, yes? But uh, I must admit I don't have experience with Impala. So, just quote from the internet. Okay. Why will you choose um, drill versus other uh, engineer SQL motor in memory? I cannot say that uh, I would use it in every case. Uh, there are cases where drill is uh, suitable and they may be other where not. Uh, for data exploration, that's definitely a case. So if you have uh, various file formats or data in, in MongoDB um, and you want to query all of those data with SQL without any overhead on that, then drill, in my opinion, is a good choice. But there are other cases like productive solutions and for that I personally wouldn't use uh, drill. So uh, just to, to, to say, uh, for example, I personally like uh, Spark SQL, but you have some overhead uh, to start with. You start shell, then you, you have to, to write a few snippets of code before you can, you can, you have to register some temp table and you can start to query. And there are also some limitations related to presentation. So for that, I like uh, that drill allows me just instantly query uh, files. Okay, thank you. You're welcome. Some more questions? Feel free to ask about whatever is in your mind. Also, you can ask, well, I don't know about the pictures, <laughs> which you saw. Yes, uh, please. So you, can, you said uh, you can uh, query structured and semi-structured uh, files or data. So what do you understand uh, with semi-structured uh, files? Semi-structured. Yeah. Semi-structured. Yes, it's a good question. <laughs> uh, so, yes, the question is what I understand by semi-structured. Uh, I cannot give you a good example of semi-structured. It's a quote from the from the documentation. But uh, I can say what I understand by nested, which was another one, just like JSON. Some more questions? Uh, yes, there is. Um, can you tell us how to get started with the um, with drill? So could could you please repeat? I didn't. How to get started? How to get started? Yeah. Yes, it's it's a very good question. Uh, you just download uh, drill distribution from the web page, which was shown, and then you unzip it or, uh, or untar, and then you start locally your, your drill like this. And that's your start, that's your starting point. But then you probably will need to tune uh, just one thing, which are the storage plugins. Uh, let's say typically, at least in my case, I'm dealing among other formats with CSV. So I, I have to tune uh, CSV here um, to, to say that we have a headers because by default it treats CSV as without headers. So you have to do some small adjustment in the in the configuration. I can s show it at once. Is this particular one? So I'm saying that my CSV is the one with header. Just adjusting it a little bit, and then you can query it. And all the other uh, formats are in place, so that's if you query files. But if you want to query some uh, other data sources, like 
MongoDB, for example, then you have again to activate the plugin and configure the connection to, to MongoDB. Um, do, does it have a standalone mode like Spark? Uh, so this what I'm using is uh, the shell is uh, like standalone mode. So you, you start to write queries just like that in, in, the, in the shell or in the web console, which, which is here. Okay, but you, not, not something where you can define a master and a, and a slave, no? Uh, if, okay, in this case, we are starting it uh, in embedded mode, so everything is in one machine. And I would say that that's enough for exploration in most cases, unless you have really a huge data sets. If you have huge data sets, then you have to, and if you want to go in distributed mode, then it takes some effort, I must say, because you have to set up Zookeeper uh, by yourself and then uh, link uh, the, all the nodes with this uh, Zookeeper. So it is uh, some effort. Here, in this case, uh, we have my pseudo cluster is just one drill bit here. But in case of, if the cluster is bigger here, you can see all the nodes on this console. Thank you. Oh, you're welcome. More questions? Yes, here we are. Yeah, so uh, yeah, I was thinking about uh, use cases for, uh, for uh, production or, those, or something mm -hmm. like that. Because uh, I'm, th I'm thinking that maybe then drill could be of use when you have uh, disparate data sources, like you may have different data sources that you want to uh, you want to mix, but uh, you don't you, or you cannot uh, load them separately in a, in a one in a one data place like you know load them on HDFS and then do the do the analysis. Is that right? I mean, like uh, you would use uh, drill for for that managing of uh, display data sources. Say you have a, a part of it in MongoDB and some other in data files like CSV files. Some other part of uh, in uh, in some other data type. So yeah, I, I'm, I will try to rephrase your question, but please keep the microphone. If I rephrase it incorrectly, <laughs> you can correct me again. So uh, your question is pretty much that uh, fr from this presentation we see that drill is good if the data sources are distributed, but what if uh, all the data are in HDFS? Yes, uh, if uh, drill is also suitable for that, or or is not what you mean by uh, the question? Well, uh, no, no, I think it. Yeah, I think it's uh, it's yeah. Just to, just to know that uh, if. If you know a drills uh, power or drills uh, drills uh, proposal is about this use case where you have disparate data, data sources, as opposed to, for example, in Pala, where you would you know uh, have the all the data you want to query uh, in one system, right? Okay, so if uh, if you are interested, if drill fits uh, or or is suitable for the scenario when all your data are in in HDFS. Uh, Yes, is that? Uh, oh, yeah, well, that, yeah, that's a, another way to put it. So, yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, I mean, uh, if you have, for example, all your data in, in ACFS, yes. uh, would it make sense to use Trail? Definitely, yes. Uh, and uh, the answer, OK, you have pretty much two possibilities. You can use uh, Hive or you can use uh, Drill. Or you can even use Drill over Hive uh, if you want. The, uh, generally, I, I tried to. In one solution, I was trying to use Hive on HDFS data and then Drill, and the performance of Drill was better. Uh, but it was Drill one, uh, sorry, it was um, uh, Hive one point something. So I didn't try it with Hive two. I've heard that the performance is better. In that case, where I tried it, uh, Drill was better. Uh, drill is uh, even, uh, let's say, promoted as part of uh, Hadoop ecosystem. So one of the um, natural way of using um, drill is to use it over uh, on top of HDFS. And I think in case of distributed setup, it makes much sense because uh, each node uh, can easily access each part of the data which is needed for computation. So of course it is suitable, but again, I will refer to one of the uh, slides. 
for exploration, of course, absolutely. For product production environments, I would be a little bit careful with drill, mainly because of um, error handling. You always can have at some point some messy data and everything is broken. Does it answer your question or, or yeah. not fully? Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Thank you very much. Okay, you're welcome. Uh, hi. Uh, Hello. Thanks for the talk. Uh, can you tell us something about the memory requirements of drill? It is needed that the data uh, fits in memory, these kind of things. Thanks. Uh, yes, thank you. Uh, so, uh, yes, uh, is it needed to, or is it required to, uh, for the data to fit into memory? Uh, let's say it's recommended. If you want to have a good performance, then definitely data should fit. Uh, if it doesn't fit, then of course it affects performance, but it's also possible to use drill. And for that purpose, um, the distributed mode is, uh, is introduced and, and uh, recommended for bigger solutions. So uh, the query can be spread across the, the nodes and each node is processing part of the data as big part as it can fit into memory, and then gives um, feedback. I must admit that I didn't use drill in uh, for parallel queries. So in all the cases where I used it, it was only single queries. Query. So I don't know how it, it how does it behave when there is heavy load. Uh, just don't have experience with that, and it's also something worth maybe to to check about the memory uh, requirements for those. Cases which uh, we use it, um, we can quickly take a look who, how much does it take. Uh, not so much. Uh, okay. Um, no. <laughs> Virtual memory 24 mega. So, or no, it's below. It's, no, it's below one megabyte. So, so it's, uh, it's quite okay. But the data was very small, yes. So uh, for bigger data, it can be quite uh, memory uh, uh, heavy because it's also Java, and the, the, this whole garbage collection is not always as optimal as we would wish. So it, generally, please be prepared for uh, for memory. You you have to to have uh, yes, 32 gigabytes. I would say from my point of view, is is a reasonable <laughs> amount. Was that final question, or we, we actually the time is already finished? But but if there is somebody who would still ask, seems no. Okay, great. So I would like to thank you very much for for attending, and uh, yes, hopefully you will ha you will do a good use <laughs> of the information. <laughs>